Hi, I'm Louise, and I'm the director of Late Afternoon. Late Afternoon is a short film we made here at Cartoon Saloon. The film follows Emily, an elderly woman who struggles to connect the past and the present. Oh, hello. So the, the, the idea came from the fact that I wanted to tell a story about the inner life of a woman and to really um, explore that on screen. Uh, the way I work is I usually draw a lot of the character in my sketchbook um, and that's where the idea grew into a script. Even in some of the earliest drawings you can see elements that made it all the way through to the final film. The character of Emily, for example, the colourful shapes, the feeling of weightlessness. I was searching for a way to express a certain sensation in the film, a feeling of flow and momentum. My inspiration for, for Emily actually came from, I suppose, my own grandmothers. Uh, I was quite close with them when I was a child. Um, and, you know, for me, they always were my grannies. Um, but of course, I, I realise as I get older that I only really knew a small part of who they were. I didn't really see them as women who'd lived full lives. I just saw them as my grannies. So uh, I guess I, I think about that sometimes and, and how to explore that whole aspect of who they were. After all that time um, of the idea being in my sketchbook and in my head, um, I actually was able to put it together into a script form. Together with Cartoon Saloon, we applied for funding through the Framework Scheme, which is in Ireland. Um, it's run by Screen Ireland and also RTE. So that basically allowed us to make the film, which was brilliant. The only issue is that we only had about 10 months to make it. <laughs> so the race was really on in order to get it over the line. Getting started on the film meant building a team, which was a great opportunity to collaborate with um, some really fantastic artists. So I was really fortunate to have Anya McGuinness and Stefano Scaplin coming on board as concept artists. They, um, as I boarded, they basically focused on the light and the colour and really helped to figure out how to lead the transitions through from the present day back into the memories and, and back again. Together we developed um, a visual style and a visual approach for three distinct areas of the film. We had the, uh, the present, which was the sitting room. It's kind of a static camera and a limited color palette. There's the subconscious, which is um, open world. It's um, sort of negative space and a feeling of weightlessness. And then finally, of course, there's the memories. And the memories had to feel dynamic. They had to feel vibrant, but they also had to feel like they were fleeting. The connecting thread between each of these distinct areas was colour. Colour was a way for us to symbolise the memories and a way for Emily to revisit the past. So the look of the character designs was quite important to me. I wanted them to be simple um, and expressive and sort of also capture that feeling that I had in my sketchbook. The way I approached it was um, not to do the kind of traditional model sheet with the turnarounds, um, I actually did these quite loose posing sheets for the animators and um, that basically helped them to think outside the box to be a bit more playful with the volumes for example. Um, it gave them the freedom to push and pull the characters as needed in the scene. So in some shots we left off details such as eyes um, and even mouths um, but it's still possible for the audience to actually read the emotion in the scene. So this was actually the first time I was directing a film that had dialogue in it. Um, for me then, working with actors was quite a new experience. Luckily, we had Fanula Flanagan come on board early on. Is that tea? I'd love a cup. Yes, of course. She might be familiar to a few of you. She also lent her voice to Maka in Song of the Sea. I think her voice really brought a warmth to Emily um, that helped to bring her character to life gave me a lot of confidence going forward as well with the other actors and with the animators. Colin McAnumara created the music for the film. Colm is a very talented musician and composer, so I was delighted to be able to work with him. We worked back and forth, keeping an open dialogue throughout the whole production. I think that the music really helps us to connect with Emily's journey. It flows in and out just like her memories. I really love it. So one of the biggest challenges we had on the film was figuring out the complex camera moves in 2D animation. Sometimes it was about moving the camera and sometimes it was animating the move in camera. The animators did a really fantastic job capturing the feeling and momentum that we needed. 
Here's a couple of clips that show the progression of some of the more complex camera moves. In this clip, we moved the camera across the scene. The background and the animation had to be planned with that in mind. The warping effect was therefore done in the actual animation. So in this scene, we actually moved the background behind the character and then animated them in camera as it was. We had the extra challenge with many of these scenes, which was that we needed to animate a lot of them on ones in order to match the smooth movement of the camera. In real terms, this means double the amount of drawings per scene. The sitting room was a key location in the film. It's the one place that feels stable and that we return to over and over. The room evolves gradually throughout the film. There are shifts in the light and perspective that reflect how the past and the present are becoming more fluid. Early on, we wanted it to feel structured and static, flat staging, locked camera. Whereas at the end, the memories are catching up to the present. The sitting room begins to bend and warp, just like the memories do. The light in the sitting room is also really important. Throughout the film, the sunlight that comes in the window actually moves position. At the beginning of the film, Emily is cut in half by it, whereas at the end, she is actually bathed in light. <laughs>